physically attacked because of your race. You could raise your hand. All of a sudden, he just gave me a blow and said that you black man go to your country. So I mean, I I, I was embarrassed, and so I, I mean I decided to defend because the way he gave me a blow, I mean I don't understand. So I just raised my head and I saw that there were three other guys also coming. And then all of a sudden, this, this, I mean, started blowing me. So I was just covering my face here and there. Uh, within about two, three minutes, you know, they tried to give me, you know, what they could do. So after a short time, they took on their heels. And blood was, you know, coming out from my nose, from my mouth. Even as you could see, you know, I had my teeth broken. How many times have you been attacked? Three times. How many times have you been attacked? Uh, Four times. Uh, I had a cut on my lip, upper lip, with a knife. With a knife? Yeah, look at it. This guy is there. So this is all in one attack? Yeah, the first. You broke your wrist yeah. with an iron rod, yeah. cut I, you with yeah. a knife? I spent two weeks with a serious uh, concussion. I spent two weeks in the hospital, in Baroness. Two in, weeks in the hospital? That was in, not the Moscow, in Baroness. How many people attacked you? There were about nine or ten of them. Some of the rise of ultranationalism and racism has to do with um, dislocation, social dislocation associated with the breakup of the Soviet Union. As people have lost one identity, they have been actively seeking other identities. Um, and those whose lives are difficult, those who have poor economic prospects or are feeling otherwise dis socially dislocated, have sometimes looked to ultranationalism. To support African decolonization, the Soviet Union offered a free education to some African students. Africans continue to come here to study for two reasons. The schools are good and they're affordable. But increasingly, there's a hidden cost added to that education, and that's fear. So I had to use my hand to break the window much bigger because the fire was like at our backs and we had to run. The fire broke out at a housing dorm like the one behind me here. The authorities say that it was caused by faulty electrical wiring, but a lot of the students think that it was actually intentionally set by racists at a foreign housing dorm to hurt, kill, or drive foreign students out. But you think somebody set the fire? This is the Moscow Protestant Chaplaincy, one of the few places in the city where African students can come to feel safe. The church also operates a racial task force which helps collect information about the attacks. It's a real hub, it's a real center for a lot of our African students. Groups like the Moscow Protestant Chaplaincy are necessary because many victims won't report attacks directly to the police. If you do go to the authorities, um, it's going to turn back on you and, and, and hurt you. Even a black man was beaten in the metro. When three policemen came, you know, he was lying down actually, he, you know, he collapsed. The three I mean, policemen who came, one of them was saying, ah, this is a good job from, from our, our future leaders. They are trying to defend their country. The government's response has been pathetic. The laws aren't bad. What we, what we need is enforcement of the current laws. There is hate crimes legislation. They need to use it. They need to care. Four suspects fled in racist attack. They killed, but they were set free. This should be a major problem for everybody who lives in Russia. Do you get the sense that there's some apathy? I don't think it's so much apathy as it is a feeling in them that they deserve it, which is scarier. So are you afraid to go out? No, I'm not afraid. I was hungry. What is that? That's it. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> What is this? Tell me what this is. That's Mace? A, no, that's a tear gas. Are you afraid to walk around the city? Oh, yeah, really, really, really. Yeah, because, you know, when you live in the house in the morning, you don't know what may happen to you. And does that make you want to leave Russia? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's for that life really, or uh, as we hear, life is not worth living. And does that make you want to leave Russia? Of course. Of that. Very soon I'll leave this country, actually. This is not a place where I, uh, I think a black man should live for long.